spot, but I'm um, San Francisco Bay, past the 39, early p.m. Can't remember what time. Got the waiting cab, stopped at the red light. I just wasn't sure of, but it just turned out right. Started straight off, coming here as hell. That's his first words. We asked what he meant. He said, Where you from? We told him my lot. You take a holiday. Is this what you want? So have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day Have a nice day Hi guys, my name's Andy and in this lesson we're going through Have a Nice Day by the Stereophonics. Um, this is a real cool kind of radio hit song and uh, we've got a capo second fret to be able to play it and I'm going to show you and demonstrate this song from an absolute beginner's point of view, all the way through to doing the uh, strumming techniques and the little riff that I've just demonstrated. And we're going to go through every section of this song, but we're going to start off with the absolute basics because this song can be super simplified down to just two bars of an A chord and then two bars of a D chord, which my priority with absolute beginners. Um, which is the majority of people who follow my channel uh, are beginner guitarists. My priority with you guys is making sure that you can play something along to the record. And if we simplify this song, maybe, you know, the, the example where I've used this song with my students in actual one-to-one -one lessons would be you've learnt a few chords, you've learnt your open chords, but you haven't quite mastered kind of any songs yet. You, you've played bits of them, but nothing's quite coming together and certainly not along to the record, okay? So in that case, I want you guys to play two bars of a standard A major chord and you'll probably be playing it like this if you followed my channel. And then a standard D chord and playing your A chord like this way and I'll send a link below to show you how to play these chords if you're not aware of them. This is an A major. And then we have your anchor finger, where we can keep that finger down and then change to your D chord, okay? And that will be for two bars, ideally with down and up strumming, but you can even just play it on the beat if you want. So an example of just downs and ups, one, two, three, four, one, two, then a D. One, two, back to A. Downs and ups every time. This is down and up, eight strumming. And for example, And that is an essential skill. We've got capo second fret to make this sound right to the record. If you don't have a capo, you can still do what I've just done there but you won't be able to do it along to the record and I'm not going to be showing you away without a capo, it's, it seems irrelevant really. Um, so that's the vast majority of the song, verses and chorus, two bars of an A and two bars of a D, but in the verses when he gets to the end of the lyrics, so for example, San Francisco Bay, past P39, early PM, can't remember what time. Got a waiting cab, stopped at the red light. Address unsure of, but it just turned out. Then we hit a G chord. And I've gone for a four finger G. So a G chord where we have our third and little finger down, otherwise known as a big G, commonly, but it's not really called anything else in guitar world. Um, and the reason I've gone for this is one, to make it sound right, but also we got our third finger anchor making the change to and from a G chord really easy. So we've got that one for two bars, but it just turned out right. And then to a D again. And again, I'll be showing you the alternatives to these chords in a second. I'm just making sure that my absolute beginners can play this song because that's how I use this song 
in, um, in, in my one-to-one -one lessons usually. It's right at the beginning and we're getting used to basic strumming and getting um, you playing this along to the record because the structure is pretty simple. So we've got that intro, which is um, two rounds of, it's like a chorus basically. <laughs> Ba -da -da, ba -ba -ba -da -da. Hitting every one of those down, up, down, up, down, up. So that's two bars of A, two bars of D. That again. And then that happens one more time in the verse, ending on a, two bars of G and then two bars of D. And uh, then that all happens again. The, the whole verse happens again. Two bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A, two bars of D, end of the verse. You stick a G in there. If it's not the end of the verse, you don't stick a G in there, basically. Um, and that's the whole kind of thing. Um, we'll cover, there is a middle eight section. Yeah, let's cover that now. There is a middle eight section to this song as well. Um, so typical song structure with this song follows. Again, this is why I choose this song so early on in, in my beginner's lessons. We have intro, two bars of A, two bars of D. That repeated twice. Then your verse as I've just described, chorus, verse two, chorus two. So that's each section of the song where, as I say, the majority of the time you're playing two bars of A and a two, two bars of D. We then are, are about halfway through the song, so we're in the middle of the song, and we have this other section which lasts eight bars. That in Europe and the UK is called a middle eight. Um, in America, you tend to call that a bridge. Um, it's just a section in the middle of the song that's kind of something else. So we've got the intro, verse, chorus, and then the middle eight happens as that extra section, which isn't just a repetition of those other two. And that middle eight is two bars of an E chord, and this will be where the guitar solo kind of, kind of comes in. So two bars of an E chord. Do, 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 do. Two bars of D. Do. And then just one strum of a D minor. And then back to a verse or chorus, I guess. It goes on as normal. So two bars of E, two bars of D, two bars of E, one bar of D, one bar of D minor is how that works. Um, cool, right, now we're going to get on to the more of a riff content. So, um, to play the riff, like this, um, we're going to play a three in a line A. So, A major, played like this, because it's easier to visualise and it's easier to play all the little variations. The first variation is we're playing an A sus 2, where you simply lift your third finger off. So, one, two, three. That's our A major, which you should probably be aware that this is how we can play that. There's many different ways that we can play this A, like one figure, for example, sounds exactly the same. But this A sus 2, we have two fingers down, and we're going to begin up more. I've got a whole section on, on sus 2s and sus 4s, because they're great to be able to learn and be able to play recognisable little riffs like this. And, and then the other chord we're going to play, in place of the D chord, we're just going to take your first finger off. Which kind of makes the root note to this chord, this, uh, this open D string, um, because we've taken your first finger off. And then you just do the same riff again. So... But we still have that riff content, okay? Um, so from a chord's point of view, that's what happens. We still go to the G absolutely as normal and then rather than just going back to a standard D chord we're going to play something a little bit more interesting and we're going to give the uh, the D and F sharp in the bass by having your thumb over the top really tricky technique don't advise this at all for beginners unless you've been playing six months to kind of a year when you start pulling this thumb over and actually playing notes and then um, we play basically your D sus2 so lifting off our third finger this time from a normal D chord, and it's basically that. That's what it's gonna kind of sound and look like. Just the two strings down, and then we're gonna pull this back. 
Sounds really cool. D sus2 with an F sharp in the bass. And again, we throw that in there after the G. Okay. Um, and they're all our kind of chord substitutions, as it were. A to A sus2 is the main riff. Right. Strumming, 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 hands strumming. Okay. Um, I'm not going to joke with you. It's, it's quite a complicated strumming pattern, but it's based on quite simple down and eights. One and two and three and four and. You have to keep this hand swinging or know the song well enough to be able to kind of strum it with downs. Because every now and again, it does sound kind of okay if we do these eights just with all downs. But the goal of this lesson is to enable you to do a pattern such as da, 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 and keep your hand moving because if you notice my strumming hand when I play it's just on this grid, it's on this movement there's no pauses, I don't go if you ever see anyone doing that they either have the strumming pattern so down they don't have to keep the movement going or they're just doing it plain wrong, okay? And it's it's likely that if you've had a go at this and it isn't working, that's what's happening, that, that pause is happening. So let's just stay on a standard A chord to get you guys doing this strumming pattern, okay? The best tip I can give for you, the, the riff and the strumming follows the singing. Ba, ba, da, dum, ba, 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 da, dum. Okay, it follows that vocal line and that runs throughout the whole song, doesn't matter what the lyrics are doing, that pattern, the strumming pattern stays the same. So down, and then we're gonna do two false swings, importantly. Down, up, down. You've gotta do those movements. Down, up, down. That's gonna be the next one. Down, up, down, up, down. That's the first bar near enough and it's only a two bar pattern. Sounds quite simple at the moment, but Add it with the next bit, it gets awful complicated, okay? So, just to demonstrate one more time, we have our hand swinging, down, up, down. With two false drums, down, down, up, down. Down, up, down. Let's try it together. Two, three, four, down, up, down. Pause there, try it one more time. Two, three, four, down, up, down, up, down. One last time, two, three, four, down, up, down, up, down. If you want to pause this video and just have a go at that, feel free to. I'll still be here when you get back. Here I am, hello. Um, then we've got three upstrokes in a row. Up, 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 down, up, down. And it's these three upstrokes in a row. Whenever we just do upstrokes and miss out downs, it's going to be weird if you're not doing it because... If you were tapping your foot along to it, we're not playing on when you were tapping your foot. It's, it's a really good idea to start tapping your foot if you want to get into these strumming patterns. Um, so down, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, down. With muted strings, so you can really hear what this strumming hand's doing. And I've just got my fingers lightly over the strings. They're not pressing down because that sounds bad. I'm just doing this. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, down. One more time, try and get a little bit closer. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, down. The entire time. My hand is just moving like this. And that's the important thing. And you have to be thinking. And I had a many, I had about four or five emails last week or Facebook messages or anything. And feel free to send me them. I'll answer them when I can. But everyone was saying, how do I instinctively know which strumming pattern to do? Because when you get up to a certain level, like the end of my beginners course or whatever, you know, th there starts to be so many strumming patterns, why would you go for one or the other? And I've tried to do it on hand movements and things, but you've got to be able to analyse it in your mind, really, and you've got to be able to listen for kind of melody in the strumming and copy a short pattern and then repeat it for anything else that you do. 
So this is a perfect example because we're basically singing the strumming. Ba ba da ba 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 da dam ba ba da ba 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 da bam. Now, I think one kind of thing that a lot of people do is if they get it slightly different to that, because often people can kind of hear what they're supposed to do, but they can't physically do it as well. So if you're going for this pattern and you're getting pretty close to it, but you keep making one, you add one extra jump stroke in there, or, you know, just everything kind of works. It sounds close, but not quite. Do you know what? Often in a song, we're actually going to vary this strumming pattern anyway. So don't worry about that. The artist would kind of, just to give you an example. I added way more downstrokes the second time I did it, okay? You might not have even noticed because it's, it's such a fine, fine line and the riff, con the important bits were still there, the sus twos and whatnot. And you could still sing over it because this hand is still moving, okay? So just one quick recap, but if the important thing is to be able to loop it. You need to be loop it over and over again, maybe we're just with one chord. Loop, loop, loop. Or even better, stick the song on and have your hand over all the strings and just do this for the whole song. If you can't keep this in time with the actual song and it, and it kind of be correct, you're not going to be able to put the chords to it. Stick to the simple one if you want to be able to strum it. Just the downs and ups, okay? Or a variation on that. Um, the extra thing, really don't recommend doing this if you struggled with that at all, but the extra thing that I also added in the demo in the video and that it really does kind of bring this song to life a little bit is adding some mutes. So compare this. Oh, I haven't even showed you where to do the sus twos yet, have I? Um, yeah, let me do that first. So with the sus twos, sorry, it's early morning here. I'm, I haven't woken up yet. Um, we're going to add the sus twos. Um, down, up, down. Down, up, down, sus two. I hope you could see most of that and the camera's kind of dropping them. Or maybe I'm going lower in my sofa. Down, up, down. A, sus two, there. A, A, sus two. Again, you're thinking of that melody, and the melody is on this note, second fret, where that third finger is, basically. If I just played that on its own. Okay. You're recreating that. Just with the with the chords and, and the strumming basically. Um, and then that keeps going. So you do that once. And then take your first finger off to play this um, kind of A sus2 with a D in the bass. Or just keeping the riff going, sorry. Hope that's clear for you guys. As I say, it's not easy. So, you know, if you've been playing guitar just a couple of months and you're expecting to get this, I'd, you know, just try it the easy way and play it along to the record and learn the little bits of it. You know, get, get the parts separately and try and put them all together at the end. Because when we start with the muting, we're, we're trying to give the impression of as much content. Well, I'm just trying to add as much content as we can to add many different parts that, that go together to make this song. All, all in one guitar riff. Um, cool, so muting. I need to sit up a little bit, really. So there is some right hand dampening in this song, as I've uh, explained earlier. And it generally happens on beats two and four, which if you follow my channel for a little while, you'll know that's where the snare drum hits. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the only time that I didn't mute, or give this kind of percussive tap even, uh, was on beat four. 
of the second bar of the riff. So, mute. Just not on that last one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just not on that last one. And what am I doing to create this sound? You could do it without the tap, which would just be kind of an outside, a lighter hit, where I'm just putting my hand over the strings to dampen them. Okay, that's just muting on beats two, four, and then two of the second bar. Um, to get the tap, this tap comes from tapping the strings against the frets here. If you tap anywhere else, you tend not to get that sweet kind of, I don't know, Jason Mraz, um, Jack Johnson type, type hit. It doesn't sound as sweet. You only get it from tapping the strings against the fretboard here. You can get it over the sound hole as well, but you have to kind of hit it just hard enough to put your strings down to the metal of your frets. And then it does, it gives the impression of more sounds basically. It makes the acoustic guitar percussive. As I say, two and four of every bar apart from the last four, because that's where we hit sus two, straight to sus four. Um, you can also mute in between each of the up strums. And there I wouldn't be doing percussive hits so much. It's just the silence works quite well. Demonstration. With more taps. Definitely takes quite a bit of practice, but if you work on the right sort of songs that have this kind of percussive tap in it, you'll really get it. So songs on my channel that I've already filmed with the percussive tap. Uh, I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. I don't think I've done that one yet, but I'm going to be doing it really shortly. Um, Lazy Song by Bruno Mars has this tap. And all the reggae type strumming as well. Um, really good ones to check out if you want to get these up strums going. But that's all the content of the, of the song, as I say. So there are many different levels that you could do this song at. And wherever you're at, I hope that, that you learned something from that. But also just concede that it's not going to all fall together on its own all at the same time. You're going to get little bits of that at different times. There's going to be a full write-up of every kind of level of, of that song, the different ways to play it on my website, including just the general song sheet. So make sure you check out that um, by following the link either over here or in the description below. Um, I'm filming a whole beginner's course of actual guitar lessons rather than songs, so check out those as well. Hey, I'm preaching to the choir here. I hope you've subscribed if you like what I do, and I hope to see you again. Bye for now.